Hi, John Rhodes here, and welcome back. A big hello to all my subscribers, and thanks for those of you that have sent questions. I have tried to answer as many of them as possible, and I will continue to do so if you keep them flooding in. In this presentation, we're looking at a typical referred case. It's a maxillary molar where somebody's had trouble finding the root canals. I'm going to show you how I assess the preoxive radiograph and see what kind of challenges are going to be ahead with a root canal retreatment in this case. And then I'll go on to show you how I manage them. So I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you at the end. So here's the preoptive radiograph, and in this case it was taken by the referring practitioner. And it's always nice to get a good quality radiograph with your referral. What can we see? What challenges lie ahead? Well, the obturating material in the palatal canal is short of the radiographic terminus. This could be because the canal is sclerosed apically, or perhaps as an acute apical curvature. But either way, it's not going to be difficult to remove that gutta perca using a gates Glidenbach. The radiographic terminus, as you can see, is well beyond the obturating material. The tooth has been restored with a full gold crown, and in fact the crown is quite good and the margins look reasonable, so we won't need to remove this during root canal retreatment. However, look closely at the pulp chamber and you can see calcification. This may be the reason why the canals were not located. We'll need to remove this material in order to gain access to the floor of the pulp chamber and locate those orifices. So when is an access cavity not an access cavity? When it's a veritable sinkhole like this one, that will certainly be big enough for us to carry out the root canal retreatment successfully. And the first job is obviously to remove all the temporary restoration. With the temporary removed, we can now see the pulp floor and the obturating material in the palatal canal. We're going to use the pulp floor map to guide us to where the orifices of the canals are. You can see here that the base of the cavity is dark. This is where the pulp floor is going to be. And you can also see where the previous attempt at locating the buccal canals has been. But these are placed far too buckily. So the weapon of choice to remove calcified material from the pulp chamber is an ultrasonic tip. In this case, I'm using a StarTex 3 ultrasonic tip in a piezon ultrasonic unit at high power with water spray. They do get hot and you obviously want the material to be removed as it's loosened. You could use an ultrasonic scalar tip. So now we can look at the floor of the pulp chamber under high microscopic magnification and we can see that using the pulp floor map we can locate the orifices of the root canals. In this case it's the distobuccal canal, 
located under that lip of dentine. You can see where the previous attempt was as well at the top of the screen. And here we've got the orifices of the MB1 and MB2. So now it's a simple matter of measuring and tapering those main root canals and then irrigating them with 3% sodium hypochlorite. I'm using an electronic apex locator to determine the working lengths and then in this case I used an edge endo file to taper them very rapidly. Irrigation was carried out with a combination of 3% sodium hypochlorite and some citric acid. In this case, I agitated the sodium hypochlorite with an endo activator. There was confluence between the MB1 and MB2, which is great because it means our disinfection protocol is going to be a lot more efficient. And finally, we have the completed obturation, in this case a vertically compacted gutter perca technique in the MB1 and MB2, the distabuckle canal, and finally the palatal canal. So here's that preoptive radiograph of the maxillary right first molar showing the previous attempt at root canal treatment and the calcified material in the pulp chamber. Here's my standard paralleling view using a rin holder of the final obturation showing a good coronal apical seal and then a distal angled view to separate the MB1 and MB2 which unfortunately are a little bit hidden behind the implant. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned because there's going to be lots more interesting content on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And above all, enjoy your endo.